Last time on the Skip and Josh podcast. You know that I don't want to hear anything about that quarterback that plays on that team called the Buccaneers. And yet, yeah. on Monday, you of all people sends me a text message telling me about his age and the age of Pat Mahomes and the age of, <laughs> of Pat Mahomes' dad. Like, yeah. I don't want to hear anything. And, and, you're, and you're helping fuel the fire. You're listening to the Skip and Josh podcast with Skip Sherman and Josh Obadia. Okay, Skip, today we're going to count down our favorite NFL quarterbacks of all time. But before we do that, there's something that's bugging me that I need to tell you about. You're kidding me? Boy, are you bugging me, man. I'm going to, when I get, I'm going to nail, ooh, I'm, I'm getting bugged now. Whoa, man. What bugs me, it's the premise of the show, really. <laughs> yes, I feel so much better after I tell you what bugs me. Go ahead. So, obviously, we're all accustomed to this new normal, right? You know. First, there was no sports at all. Then after four or five months, sports came back, but it was different. No fans in the stands and not as many games as we're used to seeing. And, you know, the NHL has adjusted there. They have this Canadian division and the NBA has adjusted and the NFL adjusted and Major League Baseball adjusted. And anyway, we're all used to it as fans now. It's not a big deal. So the thing is, these leagues, and I mean, the NFL was really lucky. They had a few games they had to postpone. Uh, baseball, you saw what happened in baseball at the beginning of the season. There were a few teams that had to be quarantined and couldn't play. And then they had to cram a bunch of games into a short period of time. Um, the NHL is actually having a similar problem right now because there's two teams that aren't playing at all. But the bottom line here is that if I'm any of these leagues, I'm just happy if I can get my games in. Right. Right. I'm not going to get greedy. Yeah. Yeah. However, what bugs me is The NBA is planning to hold an all-star game this year. This, to me, is the most backwards thing I've ever heard. I saw something this week about the all-star game that LeBron said something and then another player agreed with him. And I don't even know what LeBron said, to be honest. I don't know. Maybe you don't know. Uh, No, I'll tell you what he said. He said, it's ridiculous that we're going to play an all-star game this year. Not in those exact words. Oh, my God. I mean, and if LeBron James says it, that has weight. But right? even if even if Joe Schmo on some other team said it, like, why are they yeah. they're tempting fate here? Where is the All Star Game? I have no idea. Is there going to be fans there? Like, I, I don't I don't know what they're planning to do. But just think about this. Let's say you have like one team from one player from every team going to play in this All Star Game, right? Yeah. So it's all bad. of them yeah, have to bad. travel to a certain location. That's already dangerous. Then let's say they manage to play this All Star Game and no one gets sick, which would be a miracle. Now all these players have to go back to their teams. They could all be carrying viruses and then the whole league could be infected. It is really puzzling, especially when you consider that the All-Star game is such a piece of trash in the first place. Exactly. (laughs) No one cares about it. It's basically like a pickup game where there's no defense and they just dunk on each other. Like it's really like the actually the most boring game. Although last year's, I guess, the not last year, whenever the last time they had the All-Star game was a little bit better because they changed the format and right that was last year oh anyways yeah that is really bad i i told you i saw it past my eyes on twitter and i just was like nba all-star game and i i I just ignored it (laughs) like i just ignored it i didn't even know what i'm like there's no all-star game is there how could there possibly be one and apparently there is that's that is wacky stuff we don't all we haven't hardly ever talked about the nba in months months in a while no and then The NBA was the first league, as you know, to cancel or postpone or put their season on pause, whatever you want to call it. So you think like the NBA, they're smart, they're progressive, they they do things. And here they're doing this. It's so backwards. Yeah, this is really, really quite bad, actually. This is bad. Anyways, that that is bad. So anyway, did we have any uh, feedback or listener mail from our last episode? Mailbag. First of all, I want to make a correction. I love corrections. I know you do. So you you asked me about an app where you can put the sound the sound of a TV show on your phone. I remember, yeah. So I incorrectly called it TuneIn, which is something completely different. <laughs> it's actually called Tunity. That's an even weirder name. Yeah, so I just wanted to correct myself on that. Um, the listener mail we have actually is f- just sort of not from last episode. No one, we didn't get any feedback about our apps, but. Uh, I had a couple of notes from Jason, who's here in Montreal, and he commented on two prior episodes. 
Is that allowed he, to go back that I far? Yes, yeah. He, he, apparently, he went back and listened to the episodes that interested him, which I I could see, and I and knowing him, he, he's really a music guy. Um, so he he gave he gave us his top eight Bruce Springsteen songs, Josh. Oh, that's cool. Sherry, darling, it's hard to be a saint in the city. Tenth Avenue, freeze out, Thunder Road, Spirit in the Night, for you, this hard land and American land. And then he also commented on another episode, which is the concerts that we went to, the best concerts that we went to. And he said, I wish I was a guest on this podcast. (laughs) So favorite quarterback of all time, Josh. Now, if we had a list of most hated quarterback, would Tom Brady be number one? Oh, 100%. Like, I don't know what you have against the guy, but. What I have against the guy is that, well, I mean, it's, it's partly not his fault. Partly that he happened to play for Bill Belichick, who I can't stand. Right. But that's now, that's part part of the reason. The other reason is that he keeps winning and like I'm done with him. He's won enough. He should just leave. On the radio here this morning in Montreal, they had a poll on their wherever they put it, Twitter, Facebook, I don't know. I was listening on the radio. And they were saying, Are you cheering for Brady or Mahomes? <laughs> and I would figured like I figured like most people are gonna be cheering for Mahomes because aren't most people cheering against Brady unless you're a Patriots fan or a, and even then maybe you're not re- rooting for him unless you're like a Bucks fan and who's a Bucks fan in Montreal like who could be possibly cheering for Brady Are, isn't the whole world cheering against him and then they came back with a poll and was like 49% of people said they're cheering for Brady I was like excuse me I was kind of flabbergasted to think that actually people actually do want him to win like I don't really quite get that I mean I'm not I'm not like I'm not gonna go crazy if he wins the Super Bowl, but like I definitely prefer Kansas City to win the game. So I agree with you. And actually, they did a similar thing here on the radio where they asked people to text who they wanted to win the game, and yeah. I don't remember what the final result was, but it was roughly half half. Yeah, that's weird. Weird. No, very weird. Anyways, it's gonna be a weird Super Bowl for everybody because we're all gonna be watching sort of alone instead of like these big elaborate parties that we have and you know what i've said every year when we talk about the super bowl on this podcast i say the same thing that the day after the super bowl should be a holiday but this year maybe we don't need it (laughs) you know i don't think i don't think it's going to be necessary this year so um it's still fun to watch the super bowl and we'll see the weird halftime show did you hear that he put seven million dollars of his own money to to for the performance or something yeah i, I don't understand what what do you need that much money for to sing a song or two yeah i don't know anyway do you even know the weekend are you even familiar with his music i i'm i'm no, i'm only familiar with one song because i kept hearing it over and over again on a commercial the last month yeah um but no i'm not familiar with his <laughs> oeuvre I've, <laughs> with his oeuvre i figure you i figure you weren't <laughs> so josh how um let's get into our favorite nfl quarterbacks list now how how much uh tell me about your your methodology this week for uh, creating this list actually it was quite simple because there were a few quarterbacks like two or three that there were three that i knew i was putting on my list no matter what So I didn't have to do any research on them. And then Mm -hmm. the ones that I filled in, the other four, three of the other four have something in common. So so that's why I picked them. Very good. I mean, like, you're not the biggest NFL fan. You're a fan. you're you're, You're knowledgeable. But, like, when I was making my list, and especially some of my honorable mentions, I was wondering, like, does Josh even know some of these guys? So especially one player, I'm sure you don't even know but um yeah I, I had fun making the list i went through all the franchises thinking about the quarterbacks over the years and i mean like you said i had three that i immediately put on my list they were like actually one two three <laughs> and then and then four to seven i filled them in you know so it's fun 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 good good times and actually timely because the super bowls this weekend it has really nothing to do with their stats no, you could pick how you want. If it's if they if it's for a specific reason, maybe you had them on your fantasy team one year and they won you the title. Maybe that's a reason. There's one guy on my list that's completely on my list because of fantasy football implications. Um, that that's fine. Like like we always say, our our show, our our rules. So so I mean that's that's I mean as much as what bugs me is like our our um, mantra sort of mission. You know, like. <laughs> 
like or or part of our philosophy so is so is uh, our show our rules that's 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 number one no do you have any honorables i have none no i have a whole bunch of honorables so okay. i'm gonna tell you those uh dan fouts dan marino steve grogan bernie kozar steve mcnair Aaron Rodgers, and that that pains me to put a. I don't like the Packers, but I have to respect Aaron Rodgers. Drew Brees, uh, Michael Vick, and someone that if we had a list of eight would have been number eight is Steve Bartkowski. Now, do you even know this player? He's the only one on your list that I don't think I know. <laughs> he was the quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons in the late seventies and early eighties. Mm-hmm. When I first started following football, he was a quarterback of the Falcons, and he's probably. It's probably like one of the strongest throwing arms you'll ha- maybe in the history of the NFL. Like if you look up like who had the best arms, he's always in the conversation. I remember seeing highlights of him as a kid where he was throwing Hail Marys that were so high. It looked like they were leaving the stadium. <laughs> that's hilarious. So that's my honorable. So number seven. Fire away. Number seven. John Elway. How do you like that? <laughs> I like it. Look, I, I was always, I've always been an NFC person so i always treated the afc players like a little bit more fairly right like there's no way any cowboys could possibly make my list right that's that's impossible (laughs) right so like but like elway like or players from the nfc uh, from the afc i i look at them more objectively and actually i looked at his stats this morning just to like remember them they're actually not that great for many many years like he was always known as a super exciting player, but he never put up such great numbers on Denver until later in his career. He became a, a much better quarterback later. Um, and then actually it has to do with like the team around him because he actually got some good receivers. They had a great running back. So he was able to like put up great numbers, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, John Elway was great. I mean, like he's one of those first quarterbacks like that I remember in my life that could run and like break tackles because he was freaking strong. And he threw like the fastest fastball. Like his his throws were like crazy zip on those throws. Like Rifled what an arm this guy had. Yeah, like he, he had a great arm. So that's that's John Elway. Okay, number seven for me is Peyton Manning. And oh, I mean oh, 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 Peyton Manning. <laughs> the reason he's on my list has nothing to do with his stats. The reason he's on my list is because ever since he retired. He's done all these funny things like he's been on Saturday Night Live and he's been in commercials and even has his own show, I think, on ESPN called Payne's Place. Um, And I I just find him very funny. That's why he's on my list. Has nothing to do with his stats. The commercials that he has, that he does, are funny. When he was on Saturday Night Live, it was hysterical. Like, for such a, like, first of all, he's a huge beast of a man, right? He's tall, big guy. He has this southern accent. You're like, who is this guy? but he's really hilarious. He is. That's why he's on my list. Peyton uses football to teach valuable lessons of communication. Check, 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 check. Watch the sale, watch the sale. Pink, pink, watch the blitz. Brown, 55, Razor. To the... Open, get open. <laughs> get your head out of your ass. You suck. So, look at that. Nothing to do with football, just because you like, you think the guy's funny. He's number seven. Exactly, yeah. Number six. All right, number six is... <laughs> <laughs> number six is Jake Plummer. Remember this guy? Of course, of course. So he's strictly, I, I really like this player. He was a fantastic college player. I remember watching his last college game. It was a bowl game and he was just fantastic. He ran around the pocket. He moved around through. He was super exciting. He had this Jake the Snake was his nickname. He had this whole aura about him. And uh, he didn't have a great NFL career, but a good NFL career. Now, the reason why I picked him is because I was in this fantasy football pool back then when it was Jake Plummer's rookie year, and I took Jake Plummer with my last pick of my reserves. But nice, meaning, Nicely done. Exactly. Meaning that next year, I was able to keep him five picks higher, right? Still for the first pick of my reserves, basically. Nice. Right? So... And then the next year, he had a breakout season where he threw for like 3,700 something yards and and was like this, all of a sudden was this good quarterback. And then I got him for a steal. So that's my Jake Plummer story. And that's why he's number six, because he he actually won me the fantasy football pool that year. Nicely done. So, okay, number six for me is, and I don't think you're going to like this, it's Doug Flutie. 
And no, why wouldn't I like this? I oh. like Doug Flutie. So there's a few reasons why I've picked Doug Flutie. One is he's not a big guy. He's not your prototypical quarterback. And yet he was able to he's play. He's not a big guy, Josh, in normal life. Exactly. Yes. Right. So the fact that just a regular size guy, like he might even be smaller than me, was able to yeah. play a professional sport, a professional sport where you could get literally beaten up every play is a reason why I've got him on my list. But the other reason I have him on my list is because he played in the Canadian Football League for many years, as you know. In fact, he won the Grey Cup three times. He was the CFL's most outstanding player six times. So, I mean, even though he didn't win uh, a Super Bowl in the NFL, uh, he did actually, I think, play in a Pro Bowl in the NFL. But um, he never, he never got a fair shake in the NFL. Honestly, he never got his fair shake. He never got, he never had that one team, the one coach that came out and said, "He's my guy." I'm playing him. He's my starter, right? He always had to fight for every everything he got. And he always played well whenever he was in there. Yeah. And and when he was in college, he's got he was the uh he was the quarterback in probably the most famous play in college football. Oh yeah. I mean that Hail Mary that he threw against Miami. That's yeah. like very iconic. Three wide receivers out to the right. Flutie flushed. Throws it down. Caught by Boston College. I don't believe it. It's a touchdown. (laughs) The Eagles win it. Unbelievable. I don't believe it. Actually, you mentioned the CFL. I mean, many of our listeners might not even be familiar with the CFL. He's the greatest quarterback in the history of the CFL. Like, I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, Well, he's up there. I don't know if he's the best, but he's certainly up there. Number five. So that takes you, that takes us segues perfectly. And we didn't rehearse this. We didn't know each other's list, which is amazing because my number five quarterback is Warren Moon. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay. Who um, had a super long career in the NFL. He played like 15 years in the NFL, I think. I, I don't even know. He played till an advanced age. But look, this guy was one of the best quarterbacks in college. He went to Washington. He won the Rose Bowl. He was the MVP of the Rose Bowl. And because the NFL scouts are freaking racist, he was not drafted. <laughs> There's no other way around it. Mm-hmm. So he went to the CFL where he was the best quarterback in the CFL for the whole time he was there. And I think they won the Grey Cup like five years in a row. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. You're right. I mean, I think he was the starting quarterback maybe only on the last three or four uh, of those. But like he was on at least he was on the team, the Edmonton Eskimos, all those five years, you know? Correct. And, you know, the best quarterback in the league at the time when he left. And he was lucky because... The coach of the Eskimos got a huge contract to be the coach of the Houston Oilers. And he brought Warren Moon to the NFL, and then Warren Moon never looked back. And his passing stats are obscene, like the amount of yards and touchdowns and everything. And he was an unbelievably exciting player to watch and a great leader and a great guy. And, and like, I just, I always loved watching Warren Moon play football. Great. I love that pick. Yeah, thank you. So, number... Five for me, and you're going to notice a theme here, is Jeff Garcia. And oh my God, more CFL content. Yes, exactly. That's why I picked Jeff Garcia. Because, yeah, he had a nice NFL career, but Jeff Garcia was great in the Canadian Football League. He won the Grey Cup um, once. In fact, he was the MVP of that Grey Cup. Mm-hmm. And he was actually, in the NFL, he made it to the Pro Bowl four times, by the way. He was fantastic for the 49ers for many years. And people think like when you think of Terrell Owens and you think of like who were the quarterbacks that threw all those touchdowns to Terrell Owens, it wasn't Steve Young. It wasn't Joe Montana. It was Jeff Garcia, (laughs) actually. Right. And so this is another example of a guy who started in the Canadian Football League and no one in the NFL even considered him. And then when they saw how good he was in the CFL, then he moved over to the NFL. And he was actually very good in the NFL. In fact, he might have even been better in the NFL. He had a really good career in the NFL. Yeah. Number four. All right, Josh. Number four. Randall Cunningham. How do you like that? I like that. I don't care. <laughs> Randall Cunningham was like, I mean, in this day and age today, we're, we're used to having quarterbacks that are mobile, that can scramble, that can throw and run. Like this is almost a prerequisite for the modern day quarterback. But Randall Cunningham, when he broke into the league, he was one of the first guys to kind of do that, you know? Right. 
And he wasn't small. He was a tall, big man, but could run like hell. He could throw the ball a mile. Like, he was great at throwing the deep ball. And just an all-around great player, athlete, quarterback. Like, he had some iconic games on Monday Night Football. You know this play on Monday Night Football where he's scrambling to go into the end zone. He gets tackled, but he keeps his balance. He puts his hand down onto the ground to hold himself up, and he pops himself up and runs in. It's it's really beautiful. And he also had, um, in that Another Monday Night Football game, he punted once. I didn't know that. But they brought him in to punt because they were coming out of the end zone. So they just wanted to make sure they could get rid of it. And if it was a bad snap, he was going to run around or do something. And he, it was like a 90-yard punt because it bounced on the turf and took up Eagles bounce and bounced and bounced and bounced all the way down. This is like a, I think it was a 92-yard punt. That's crazy. Yeah. And what you don't realize, like I mean, he didn't have a, a tremendously great career. He had a lot of good years in Philadelphia. But they never, the Eagles teams around him never reached their potential. They had great defenses. And he was the scapegoat for a lot of different reasons why they didn't win. Everything always was pointed at him, even though, you know, it's a team game. And then he had this resurgence for one year on the Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> wasn't, was wasn't he playing with Randy Moss? Yeah, Randy Moss. It's either Randy Moss's first or second year. They were 15-1. and one. Randall Cunningham, all, like I said, he threw a beautiful deep ball. When he, him and Randy Moss were on the same team, all he had to do was throw the ball 50 yards down the field and Randy Moss would jump up and catch it. <laughs> and that was that was what they did all season. They were 15-1. and one. And I still think that they're probably one of the, the... I mean, in my mind, I can't think of any, but they're the best team that never... that didn't make it to the Super Bowl, right? Right. They were 15-1. and one. They should have won that a- NFC Championship game you remember their kicker, what's his name? Um, Gary Anderson missed the field goal and they lost in overtime. And then, then they Cunningham talk about that Ma- game on, um, on how I met your mother because um, Marshall is from Minnesota. He's from Minnesota. Yeah. I mean, a- any Vikings fans are, are a long suffering group, right? Because they haven't, well, they've never won the Super Bowl and they haven't been to the Super Bowl since like the days of uh, Fran Tarkenton. What's his name? No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Front of the purple people eaters defense and all this, like the early seventies, right? So that 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 team in the ninety seven was a tremendous team, anyways. So number four for me, you've already mentioned him, and it's Warren Moon. So continuing my theme of former CFL quarterbacks here. Nice, nice. So um, you've said a lot about Warren Moon, and yes, he did win five Grey Cups in the CFL. He was also the most outstanding player in nineteen eighty three. And as you said, this guy was a whiz. First of all, he could throw, he could run. And by the way, in the Canadian Football League, they let the quarterbacks run. They didn't used to let the quarterbacks do that in the NFL. Now they do, but that's a relatively new thing in the NFL. But in the CFL, quarterbacks have been running for millions of years. So um, I'm just I'm just glad that, you know, Canada gave this guy a chance, as you said, because the NFL wouldn't. And he proved that he could play. And then he got to go to the NFL and he had a great NFL career after the CFL career. He was also, by the way, in the NFL, he made the Pro Bowl nine times. That's nuts, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, he he was so good. Those Houston Oilers teams in the late 80s and early 90s, those were scary teams. <laughs> I remember those were scary teams. Their offenses, their offense was like pretty unstoppable, you know? He was throwing for 4,000 yards when... Only a couple of players in each league were throwing for 4,000 yards. You know, it wasn't like today where, where the yards are kind of out of control. Right. Number three. All right. Number three, Josh. Controversial. Ooh. No, well, it's not controversial for me, but some people think he's controversial, and that's Colin Kaepernick. Okay. I mean, we're going by favorite quarterback. So, I mean, he's obviously had the shortest career of anybody we mentioned here because he was really only the starter for like, what, four years, three, four years, right? Maybe less. Yeah. So I'm going to leave all his politics aside. Um, Safe it to say that I agree with his politics. So I'm pro Colin Kaepernick on that respect. Right. I don't ever, I never thought kneeling was, should have been controversial at all. It should have just been what it was, you know, like he got picked on for all the wrong reasons, but, but let's leave his politics aside and let's just talk about the player. I mean, 
as you me, most people that listen to this know me as an Eagles fan, but really my whole life I was a 49ers fan. The Eagles fandom only became was recently because of my son. And and now it's completely shifted. I am fully an Eagles fan, but it's it is weird. It, and I can't explain it. I really can't explain it. But um Colin Kaepernick's rookie year, Alex Smith was a quarterback of the 49ers. And they used to sneak Ka- Kaepernick in on like third downs and trick plays. And I was like, man, who is this guy? He's he's so dynamic. He's unbelievable. He, he's so fast. He's, he could throw so his throws are like unbelievably hard. Like fa- he, his arm strength was obscene. And then this the, the year after the 49ers that year lost to the Giants in the NFC championship game. And at the beginning of the year, after like game one and two, they would sneak Kaepernick into more and more plays, not just these weird trick plays. They would just put him in the game, you know, on third and three, and then they do something, you know, or, or they'd line him up as a running back receiver. They were, they were getting, trying to get him into as many plays as possible. And I told my son, and he's a witness, and he'll tell you this is 100% true. After like one or two games of that season, I said, the only way the 49ers can make it to the Super Bowl is if something happens to Alex Smith and Kaepernick is the quarterback. <laughs> and lo and behold, <laughs> Alex Smith got hurt, Kaepernick took over, and they made it all the way to the Super Bowl, and actually they were really one throw away from winning the Super Bowl, right? So um, that's Colin Kaepernick. And I mean, that the playoff game against the Packers, I don't know how well you remember it, Josh, he ran for like 200 yards. Like they, He was like a, a force that was like unstoppable, <laughs> you know? And it was he was so exciting to watch. You know, part of my list is how exciting are these players? Look at the players I have here. Elway, Cunningham, Ka- like these guys are Warren Moon. These are exciting football players. And Kaepernick fits right into that. And I mean, obviously you're going to see my two and one are part of that mix. Yeah, he was he was coached by Harbaugh. Yeah, exactly. And I remember I remember when they um after he after he played, after Kaepernick played a bunch of good games. Yeah. And um Alex Smith was actually getting healthy and, and ready to come back. They asked Harbaugh, so who's your number one quarterback? And he basically gave the most wishy washy answer you've ever heard a coach give. Well, you know, like the rule in football is, you know, you shouldn't lose your starting job due to injury. But I mean, when the backup comes in and he's doing things that you can only dream of, you know? That that your offense, which was like the 49ers were a completely defensive team and they had um, what's his name? Frank Gore. They would just run the ball. That was the offense. Alex Smith, you know how he is. He's a game manager. He's a good quarterback, but he's not dynamic. And all of a sudden they had this young guy who could throw a mile, the ball a mile and run around and not get like he was, he was, he was like a secret weapon, you know? So. All right. So I'm on number three. Yeah. So number three for me is Philip Rivers. And why have I oh. picked Philip Rivers? I want to know. First of all, well, number one, you recall the year that Philip Rivers got drafted. Uh, Eli Manning said that he was not going to play for San Diego, even before he got picked. Yeah. And so Eli Manning forced a trade. And so San Diego ended up taking Philip Rivers. So one of the reasons I like Rivers is because he didn't complain about the team that was going to pick him. He just went to the team that picked him and played. And by the way, he played really, really well in San Diego. He had an excellent career. He never won a Super Bowl. I don't even think they made it to the Super Bowl. But that wasn't really his fault. He wasn't really surrounded by a good team in any of his years in San Diego. There's a couple of years where I always thought they should have done better. You know, they had Damian Tomlinson and they, it looked like they should be better. But like you said, it's a, the football's a team game. You can't put it all on just one guy, you know? The other thing I was going to say is I wasn't exactly a fan of the San Diego Chargers, but anytime I would watch a game that was being played in San Diego, regardless of what month it was, the weather always looked beautiful. And so I always wanted to go. Have you ever been to San Diego? Uh, Yeah, I I always wanted to go there and I got to go there once and I was there and I'm like, I love this place. And I, I was, I was like, I was tempted to just stay and never leave. Well, it's funny because the first time I ever went to San Diego, I left the dead of winter in Montreal, November or December. It was December. I left the dead of winter in Montreal. I land in San Diego, and then you remember, like, you know, I don't know if you know the the airport is not far from the city there. It's oh, I didn't go. Close. I didn't fly there, so I have no idea where the airport okay. is. So it's it's fairly close. I'm driving to the hotel, and I'm like looking around the palm trees, the weather. I'm like, 
I'm like, holy smokes, like, what is this place? Like, how come, like, how come not, how come everybody in the world doesn't live here? Like, I don't, I, I was like, I was flabbergasted. It was, it's quite a beautiful city. Yeah. If there's anywhere I could live, that would be the place. The other thing I like about Philip Rivers is every time you hear these so-called experts talking about the best quarterbacks of all time, they only mention quarterbacks that have won the Super Bowl. So if you didn't win the Super Bowl, your name never even comes up, which isn't really fair because this guy had a great career. And just because he didn't win a Super Bowl, no one ever talks about him. The one exception is Marino. Marino's name gets mentioned as the greatest. And they always say, well, even though we never won. You know? Right. Plus, and this is, you mentioned this earlier about a different player. I once had Philip Rivers on my fantasy football team and he was fantastic. That's great. Now the, the offshoot of that, Eli Manning, Philip Rivers trade and everything mm -hmm. is that Rivers ended up on the Chargers, but the Chargers already had a really good quarterback that they drafted just a couple of years before coming off a breakout season by the name of Drew Brees. <laughs> right. And because they got Philip Rivers, they let Drew Brees walk and the New Orleans Saints said, let's pick up this guy as a free agent. <laughs> by the way, yes, New Orleans did pick him up, but you'll recall that Drew Brees, I think, was injured, and there were a lot of teams that didn't want to touch Drew Brees because they didn't know if he was still good anymore. Yeah, I mean, when you, when you see Drew Brees now and he can't throw because he obviously has a bad shoulder, like that bad shoulder has followed him around for his whole career, and he's played through it, yeah. So, I mean, I don't think San Diego made the wrong decision sticking with Rivers over Brees. Oh, no, they, 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 they did what they had to do. Number two. All right, Josh, number two for me. Can you guess, or...? Um, Steve Young. You got it. Steve Young, number eight. Uh, yeah, Steve Young. I mean, talent on talent, just on talent alone. Uh, maybe, maybe the best quarterback ever. Maybe. I mean, everyone's going to have their own opinion, but just on sheer talent. I mean, who could, who could throw and as well as this guy and make the decisions of quarterback and just be a great quarterback and also run like this guy i mean i remember watching a game once and john madden's like you know steve young could have probably been a really good running back you know and uh he was just a joy to watch obviously he didn't have the longest career because he played in the shadow of montana for a while he was actually his backup he waited his turn and uh i mean he he had a weird career you know he went to the usfl and then then he then he got out of the usfl and was the quarterback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers when they were terrible, then then eventually found his way to the 49ers and and was Montana's backup, and then eventually won his Super Bowl in '95. Um, just a tremendous quarterback, so much fun, and like I said, you know, exciting, exciting to watch. I mean, Steve Young was the high, a human highlight film as a quarterback. So he's also pretty good on television now. He is good, but his hair is ridiculous. He has this fake hair. I don't know. He's had hair plugs Hold or something. On, that's it fake? just looks so stupid. Uh, to me, it has to be. It just, it just doesn't look real. His hair. Okay. But he's pretty good on. He's pretty good on TV, actually. Yeah. No? He is. Yeah. Okay. Number two for me. You've mentioned his name today, and that's Dan Marino. So mm, the reason I the reason I've picked Dan Marino is similar to Philip Rivers. This guy was a great quarterback, had a sick arm. But unfortunately, never won a Super Bowl, even though I think he actually played in the Super Bowl in his first full year um, as a quarterback. Yeah, and, it was his second year. His second year. Yeah. But his first full year. Like they, they, he played in the, he played in the 40, he's played against the 49ers and they, they always interview Marino and he, he always says like, I thought I was going to make it to the Super Bowl every year right. after that. And then he never even made it back. Right. Now, he actually was blessed with a better team than Philip Rivers was. So you thought that they would make it back to the Super Bowl, but unfortunately for him, he didn't. But still, I wanted to include him in my list because, again, as I said, when, when, when people talk about the best quarterbacks of all time, they tend to only talk about Super Bowl champions, which he is not. And I didn't want to leave him out just because he hasn't won a Super Bowl. So, I mean, and in terms of just like pure strength of an arm... There weren't, I mean, he might not have been the best, but there weren't many that had a better arm than him. Well, it was also his release. Like, he had this this crazy, weird throwing motion where he just flicked his wrist and the ball went flying. Mm. <laughs> like, this fastest release. Like, he was impossible to sack. He was not mobile, but he was so hard to sack because he would just get rid of the ball, you know? So, yeah. I mean, that second year, his first full season, I mean... 
it's I'm looking up the stats now. And this is 1984, Josh, where usually one or two guys in the league would throw for 4,000 yards. And he threw for 5,000 yards and 48 touchdowns. And I believe the 48 touchdowns was a record for the longest time up until recently. 5,000 yards so, was unheard of back then. It's still unheard of now. Well, now some players get it just because the league is so pass happy. But if you can imagine in 1984, he was throwing for 5,000 yards. It was ridiculous. Like the, their 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 throwing attack was was unmatched at that time, you know? And actually, you know, like they're, you mentioned that they lost the Super Bowl, but... In um, that the year after that, they were the one loss of the um the Chicago Bears. Yes, in that I recall the the eighty six Bears season. You know, a Monday Night Football game. They were the only the only team that was able to. Dan Marino was the only guy that was able to like beat that defense. <laughs> You know, and then they didn't face each other. They didn't face each other in the Super Bowl because because the Dolphins lost before that. Yeah, exactly. The, the Patriots made it to the Super Bowl that year, believe it or not, with Tony Eason as the quarterback, who was not my number one. <laughs> I know who your number one is. Number one. Well, number one is Joe Montana. Yeah. You saw Kaepernick was third and Young was second and Montana's one. Montana, I'm surprised you didn't have Jeff Garcia on your list. I could have, but I mean, look, when I started following football when I was 10 or 11 years old, I, I saw some players on TV. This is how you pick your team, right? You see a player that captures your imagination. He becomes your favorite team. And that team, that guy becomes your favorite player. You know, like that's what happened to me with Joe Montana. I had started watching this guy. I was like, wow, look at this guy. He's got this cool name, San Francisco, this cool city. You know, I was 10 or 11 years old, right? I was like, wow, this guy's amazing. And then, you know, when they beat the Cowboys in the NFC Championship game with the catch, you know, like it's, it's so iconic, you know, like it's it's hard to, I mean, everybody's seen it six million times, but it still never gets old, you know. Third and three. We'll see a pick of some kind on the right side, possibly. Montana looking, looking, throwing in the end zone. Clark caught it. Dwight Clark. Um, then, of course, they went on to win many Super Bowls after that. And, and he was Super Bowl MVP. He had this amazing career and eventually, you know, actually went on to play the quarterback of the Kansas City Chiefs and had a couple of really great seasons with the Chiefs and even made the playoffs one year with them. So with his elbow, that was like falling off his arm because he, he had so much um, surgery, so much arm trouble, you know, but he was just he's exactly like what I always tell my son when he we talk about like what makes a good quarterback because there's many quarterbacks that are like six foot five they could throw the ball six miles 60 yards down the field by flicking their wrists strong arms you know big guys impossible to tackle you know but like that's what scouts used to look for now it's like can you run around are you an athlete are you mobile like this is what scouts look for but in the end it's all about like can you rise to the occasion and make a great decision when six when like Five guys from the other team are trying to take your head off, you know, in in the mad scramble in the pocket, and that's Joe Montana. That's exactly what he is. He's he rose to the occasion when, when, when he always, whenever you needed him to rise to the occasion, he did, you know, and lifted his team with him. You know, that's that's a leader, and that's a great quarterback. Fantastic. So, as you were mentioning, you know, when you were ten years old and you were finding out learning stuff about football and deciding who your favorite team was going to be. Yeah. A similar thing happened to me. I was watching my first ever NFL game one day. I was 10 years old and I didn't really know anything or anyone, but I remember seeing this specific uniform that I really liked because it was orange. And that was the Denver Broncos when they actually had a really nice uniform. And yeah. then I found out that they're called the orange crush, or at least their, I don't know if it was their defensive line or their offensive line was called the Orange Crush. And then I find out that they have this quarterback named John Elway who likes to throw a lot. And I thought, <laughs> well, this is great because I like teams that throw a lot. So I'm yeah. going gonna, gonna to pick Denver as my favorite team and John Elway as my favorite quarterback. And so, hence, he is number one on my list. I knew that you liked him. Like, I remember when we first met, you, I remember you telling me that you liked the Broncos, you liked Elway, you know. And the reason was because back then, when I was 10, most teams weren't throwing the ball that much. Most teams were no. running quite a lot. 
It's not like the NFL is today. No, no, no. So, the NFL was a total running league for the longest time. But yeah. but except Denver was one of the few teams that was throwing a lot. So I'm like, oh, this is definitely more interesting than a running game. And, and of course, I like the uniforms, as I mentioned. And he yeah. was a really good quarterback, too. Like, it's not just some schlub. And it took him forever to finally win a Super Bowl. He had to have, like, the right parts around him. As you mentioned, once they got Terrell Davis, that's when they were able to win the Super Bowls. And they also had great receivers, right? They had uh, Rod Smith and Ed McCaffrey and uh, what's his name, the tight end, um, Sh- uh, Shannon Sharp, mm. right? So, mm-hmm. like, they, they had, finally, they assembled, like, enough talent around him that, like, he just, he didn't have to do it all, you know? Because back in those 80s Broncos team, he was the whole team. And they made it to the Super Bowl how many times? They lost, right? Right, right. I think he was there two or three times when they lost. They made it th- three times, I think, with him and, and, and lost, right? Yes, yes. So, and then finally they won those games and... And he didn't have to do everything, you know, because they had a good team around. He was such a great player, honestly. He's but a terrible do, GM right now, but he's a good player. A terrible GM, you're right. But you do recall that in one of those years where he did win the Super Bowl, even though he had all those players surrounding him, he had that yeah. one play where he ran and actually yeah. rather than slide like most quarterbacks do, he actually dove head first in midair to make sure yeah. that he got the first down. He got hit in midair and did like a spin. Everybody yes. remembers that, yes, that play. Yes, exactly. Yeah. No, no quarterback does that. 11th play of this drive that started back at the Bronco 8. Third and six, Elway shot down. Almost offside, but the Packers got back on. Elway scrambling, looking, running, diving inside the five-yard line for a first down. Is he only 37? How important is this football game? How bad does John Elway want to win this football game? When you see that quarterback go down, not Elway. The the fun thing about Elway to watch when he was younger, the younger Elway, was he wasn't a great pocket quarterback. They tried to like make him into like a regular quarterback. That's how the eighties was, right? You gotta sit back in the pocket, you gotta throw. He was no good at that. <laughs> he was good in the last two minutes of the game where he could just like in schoolyard football, you know? You get in the huddle, tell his guys, you go run out and get open, I'll find you. Right? And that's that's where he shines, you know? And one of the first games I ever saw was it's called The Drive, where Denver yeah. beats Cleveland. Yeah, that was a playoff game. Yeah, It seems like every year Denver would beat Cleveland and it seemed like they would beat them the same way every year. (laughs) It's so true. (laughs) Poor Cleveland. They had some good teams in the 80s. They never could get over the hump. Right. Yeah. All right, good list. That's a fun, fun topic, especially we're going to digest football tomorrow with the Super Bowl. Super Bowl 55, Josh. I can't believe that. It'll be the first game that I actually watch. First Super Bowl that I actually watch. Well, what do you mean? You've watched all the others? I no? know, but they've all been with distractions at, at Super Bowl right, parties. Right, right, right. Yes, I have to admit. You know, when you're at a Super Bowl party, you don't always focus on the game. Yeah, You're, you're watching it like any other, like the last games that you've watched this year, the, all the playoff games, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. The Skip and Josh podcast is available wherever you listen to podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. If you listen to the show through Apple Podcasts, please leave a review. To interact with the show, send an email to skipandjoshshow at gmail.com. Follow the show on Twitter at Skip and Josh, and go to facebook.com slash Skip and Josh to like the show page. To see links mentioned on today's episode, go to skipandjosh.com. And now, for some final thoughts from the guys. All right, so do you have anything you want to uh, finish up with? Yes. So I don't think I mentioned this on our last episode, but we're just a almost, we're a little bit more than a month into this year. Yeah. And already I've had more things delivered to my apartment in this <laughs> one month than in the rest of my life combined. That's amazing. Because I'm not I'm not a big Amazon person. I'm not a big uh, online shopper at all. I'm like I know you yeah. are and your household is. Well, I'm not even I'm not even that much, but I've become like now since the pandemic, the doorbell rings like almost every day. We're getting stuff. So, this is all I know it's it's been going on for years, but it's all new to me. I'm not really a big fan of ordering things online because I like to actually hold them and touch them and see if I like them, especially if it's like clothing that has to fit a certain mm. way. Um, Clothing's difficult. Yeah, clothing's difficult. But but uh, but this month I've ordered quite a bit of stuff from Amazon, and as you know, 
when you order something from Amazon, they always offer you this Amazon Prime for free for 30 days Mm -hmm. when you're new, like me. So I'm like, okay, whatever. It's free. It's whatever. I'll try it out. I, I get free delivery. Why would I not want something for free? And then because of that, I've now started watching Amazon Prime. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to have to cancel it in a few weeks. But I started watching... The first show that I watched was... Nazi Hunters. Right, except it's just called you Hunters. Told you told me, yeah. 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 Is it good? Yo, I mean, it's good. It's good. It reminds me a lot of that Quentin Tarantino movie called Inglorious Bastards. Yeah, in, a, in so, a sense, yeah. So I'm not sure if I like the show or not, to be honest, because... There are times where, it? sorry, have you finished it? I finished season one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I, but I'm not sure if I like it because there's times where you know there's some scenes, especially when they flash back to the to the Nazi camps, where it's like it gets me very angry. And then there's other scenes where it's almost like a comedy, like they try to make you laugh. Yeah. And it I'm is. not. I'm it not is. sure how I feel about that. It's very hard to watch some of the scenes because it's very intense. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Anyway, so there's that. And the other show that I'm watching on Amazon Prime that I've started is um, Little Fires Everywhere. Yeah, I mentioned that on our show back months ago when we always, every episode we're talking about what we're watching. And and, um, yeah, I love Little Fires Everywhere. It's really good. So I'm not done that one yet. Very nice. So you know what show I'm watching? What's that? It's on Crave. And for our listeners in the US, it's on HBO. It's called Selena and Chef. Never heard of it. If you have, you, Do you know Selena Gomez? I've heard of her, yes. Okay. I mean, I, it's weird that I have to ask you this stuff, but I do, I am aware of like what you watch and listen to. And I, you know, I don't know. Maybe you don't know Selena Gomez, but so Selena Gomez, it's her learning how to cook, basically. She's at home. And she gets a celebrity chef to join her, but like via Zoom or via like, you know, remotely. And the chef teaches her how to cook a dish, you know, via instruction. And it's really quite entertaining and it's fun. And and it's it's like a cooking show and an entertainment at the same time. It's very, very cute. So. You actually did that at your house where you uh, went on Zoom and had this celebrity chef teaching you how to cook. Yeah, they would go through. I've done it. I did it three times. So Actually. if you should have like recorded it and then you would have had your own show <laughs> maybe called Skip and Chef. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Well, yeah. <laughs> so but, that's uh that's all I got for TV. I just wanted to mention one thing. We got a new logo, Josh. Yes, thanks to uh our our graphic designer. We have a huge staff on this show by the way. Yeah. And thanks so our to our graphic, graphic designer. designer who I don't know if if she wants her name mentioned, but Yeah, she does. She does. So the graphic designer is Selena Sherman, my daughter who is finished is in her first semester of a graphic design program at, at college level. So she designed our, our new logo and uh, I'll put a link to a site where you can see more of her designs. I'll put it in the uh, show description. It's a sweet logo, by the way. Yeah, it's very subtle. Like actually one of our friends said, it looks like it's just baseball. I'm like, no, no, you got to look carefully. There's two hockey sticks and two footballs, you know? <laughs> so that's the show. So I'm going to put you on the spot. What are we doing next week? Well, hold on before we talk about next week. I don't know if you're aware, because I know you've tuned out, but Duke is playing basketball in 30 minutes. Oh, I'm going to watch. I've tuned out, Josh. I know, but you have to watch today. You know why? Yeah, I know. They're playing North Carolina. Exactly. (sighs) So if Duke doesn't win any other games this season, this is the most important game. I'm uh, going to go watch. So let's finish this up. Tell us what we're doing next week. I'm going to go watch basketball. Okay. Our topic for our next episode is... And again, since it's 2021, this is a cutting edge topic. Favorite podcasts of all time. Like episodes or the whole podcast? No, no, no. The whole podcast, not episodes. Beautiful. It's very easy to research, which is right in your wheelhouse. You just got to go over your list and overcast, see what you're subscribed to and go from there. Actually, it's a little bit more difficult than, than that, than you made it seem because there are some podcasts that are going to be on my list that don't exist anymore. I agree with that. There's two that I could, there's two that I've, yeah. Okay. I know where you're, I know where you're going with that. (laughs) Good topic. And I can't wait to do that. And I don't want to offend our indie podcast friends if we don't include them. So there's a lot of pressure. You know, I've been guests on other shows, so I have these podcast friendships. So yeah, but you're not obligated to pick those in your list. (laughs) 
<laughs> I feel bad, you know, because we got to support our indie podcast brothers, but when we go over our favorites, it's probably going to be more mainstream, so that's okay. That's totally good. Yeah. Um, all right. So next week, favorite podcast. Can't wait. All right. Have a good week. Bye.